some of you might have been here for the concert on Friday night. Um, and I, as I always say, Sean is the real deal. You know, he lives his life as he sings his life. And so I just want to say how honored I am to uh, introduce you and how blessed we are to have him. And then we also have a special uh, guest also, and that's Brian Ladd, who's Sean's partner. And he sang Friday night also. You're in for a treat, I promise. You will be blessed by both of them. So please, church, welcome. to Brian, and so he's been looking forward to this weekend very much, and y'all have been wonderful and gracious, and so we thank you both so much for sharing your love, and thank you for the trust in being with, in worship with you this morning, and getting to be such a big part of this, the service today, so we're grateful for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I don't know if you've uh, ever had this happen where it could be a scripture that you're very familiar with, maybe you've known it since a child or, or whatever, but something about that scripture pops out and you see it in a whole new way. Have you ever had that happen? Uh, maybe maybe pastor is sharing in a sermon, maybe you're in a Bible study group, maybe you're just reading uh, the Bible in your own time, in your own spare time, and something about that scripture pops out and you're like, oh my gosh, I never even noticed that was there, or I never thought about it that way. So I was visiting a church um, one Sunday, and they had pieces of art down the sides of the walls of the sanctuary that were all based on different scriptures. And one of them was based on the 23rd Psalm. And it actually had the, the, the scripture, the words, in the piece of art and designed around the artwork. And for whatever reason, the way that it was drawn or painted, my eye was drawn to the end of the scripture first. So a lot of times the, the 23rd Psalm, it's a beautiful scripture. We heard it read today. A lot of times it's used to console people, to help people through struggles, through hard times. It's read at memorial services a lot of times. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want this beautiful, beautiful scripture. But my eye was drawn to the very end of it that says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is good. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian says, that's good stuff. When he has those kinds of stuff, I love that. That's good stuff. And it is. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then my eye just kind of kept going backwards through the scripture. And this is what kind of changed the meaning. And it's not, I think it's still a wonderful scripture for helping us through those times. But it turned the scripture for me into this, this scripture of praise, of celebration, of joy. Because as I kept reading backwards, you prepared this table before me full of blessing and comfort. Because I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, in the stillness of quiet waters and the vastness of these peaceful pastures, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even in the darkest valley, my Lord, my God is with me because I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of my God forever. Only goodness and mercy will follow me. Thank you. 
peaceful, kind. Love is hard sometimes. And sometimes you have to hand out some tough love. Sometimes you have to put the childish things away. And one of my favorite stories of tough love that Jesus hands out is um, the story of the man at the pool of Bethesda. And if you're not familiar with this, there's the, the way the story goes is supposedly there was this pool, and every now and then the angel of the Lord would come down and touch the water. And if you were in the water when the angel of the Lord came down, you would be healed from whatever your ailment or affliction was. And so people would wait around the pool to get in at the right time <laughs> when the angel came down to touch it. And there was a man who had been there, I think it was for 37 years. Um, and, and, you know, different scriptures will have different translations, but apparently he was paralyzed or couldn't walk. And, and so Jesus comes up to this man, and the very first question he asks him is, do you want to be well? And that seems kind of like a weird question to ask somebody who's paralyzed and been sitting there for 37 years. But what's really interesting, what's telling, is how the man answers. Because the man doesn't say, yes, I want to be well. No, that's not his response. His response is, oh, I can't ever get to the water, and nobody will help me, and every time the angel comes down, I can't get there, and everybody beats me to it. And it's kind of like this has become his identity of who he is. And Christ is saying to him, do you want to release that identity and now become something more? Now that's tough. It's some tough love. You don't get to be in your comfort zone anymore. Now you're going to have to take up your own mat and walk all by yourself and take that responsibility. And that's a, that's a whole new thing. In fact, it's so big that when Christ does heal this man, a few verses later, he gets in trouble for walking around carrying his mat because he's not supposed to do that on the Sabbath, which is silly in his face. I understand. It seems silly to us anyway. But, he, but the fact is, he's doing something that he wasn't supposed to do and he gets in trouble for it, but he blames Jesus. It's not my fault. He healed me. Right? And we hang on to that. We hang on to that, that place that we feel safe, even if it's not the best place for us to be. Mm. And sometimes you have to have some tough love. Somebody come along and say, hey, it's time for you to get up and carry your mat. You know, do you want to be well? Truly, 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 I tell you, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you this. I have come to prepare a place for you. A place of hope and of promise and glory. All these different things that we've been promised, but yet we say, we don't know how to get there. Where is this place? How will we know God? But if you look at Christ, you will see God. If you look for the Christ, that temple inside of you, that place of worship inside of us, where God lives and hands out some tough love sometimes. And the message in all of that to me, when I hear those scriptures over and over and when I see examples of Christ in, in giving the tough love, is there is more. Wherever you're at right now, if you're in a hallelujah moment on the mountain, there's even more hallelujahs. And if you're in the desperate valley moment and you just don't know where to go next, there's more. This isn't the end. You don't have to sit here for another 37 years. It's time to get up and walk. There's so much more for you. That's good stuff.
Now you know the truth of the matter. And if you believe it, that truth will make you free, free indeed. You can wallow in how bad you've had it, but let's face it, it's time for you to fully go and put your childish ways behind. Just there it is.
But uh, Sean's music, home with you. If John, if Sean has merchandise on sale in the back after worship service. All right, join us where I can see clearly now. <laughs>